and welcome to my YouTube channel where every episode I take a physics topic and hopefully explain it in a really simple and understandable way. Now some episodes are just going to be fun physics facts but most I'm going to try and tie in to the current school curriculum. So when that's the case I'm going to put the key stage in the episode title. In my last Key Stage 3 episode, I covered one of the methods of heat transfer, which was conduction. This is the process of vibrating particles transferring energy from their kinetic energy store to the kinetic energy store of their neighboring particles. This means that conduction can only occur when two objects are touching and in direct contact. And it can happen in all three states, but mainly in solids. Whereas, convection is how heat passes through fluids. If you've watched my Brownian motion episode, you'll know that a fluid is either a liquid or a gas. So it's anything with loose particles, and that's why a solid isn't a fluid, because its particles are packed too tightly together. And that's also why solids are better at conduction, because they have particles closer together and they're more likely to bump into each other. Anyways, convection takes place in fluids, and the fancy definition is when more energetic particles move from the hotter region to the colder region and transfer energy as they do. So there's some sort of heat source, like a heater or a fire. If there is a fluid surrounding this heat source, like water or air, then these fluid particles will start to vibrate more and therefore the fluid near the heat source will begin to heat up. As the particles start moving quicker, the distance between them increases. This causes the fluid to become less dense and rise. All rise! That was a blue reference there if you didn't get that. As the less dense, hotter fluid rises, the colder and therefore more dense fluid is displaced and drops to the bottom near the heater. So now the colder fluid particles near the heat source begin to vibrate more and spread out and rise. So the same process happens and forms a convection current which goes up, round and down, circulating energy throughout the fluid. You may have heard the phrase hot air rises and now we know that it actually does and this is how hot air balloons work as well. But this happens with liquids as well, so all fluids rise when they're heated and remember this is all to do with the density decreasing as the fluid is heating. I showed a great example of this with water actually in one of my experiment episodes, so make sure you go check that out too. So convection is actually how the radiators in our house work. So it will be hot and it will emit heat, so the air nearest the radiator at the bottom of the room will heat up first. This air will then rise to the top of the room and the cold air will drop to the bottom. The cold air is now nearest the radiator, so will heat up, and the hot air at the top of the room will cool down, so then the hot air will rise again, and the cold air will drop. And so on. This is an example of a convection current in your very own house. Right, now on to the third method of heat transfer, radiation. So radiation is a method of heat transfer that does not require any contact between the heat source and the heated object. Don't touch me. All objects radiate invisible electromagnetic waves. More specifically, infrared radiation or thermal radiation. Because this type of heat transfer uses waves rather than particles, it allows the radiation to travel through space, which is a vacuum. So radiation is how we can still feel the heat from the sun through space. Yes! So objects are radiating these invisible waves, and the hotter the object is, the more energy it will radiate. So a hot pizza, straight out of the oven, will radiate more energy than a cold pizza that is yet to be cooked. I love pizza. If a colder object absorbs more radiation from a heat source than it emits, then it will heat up. Likewise, if an object emits more radiation than it absorbs, then it will cool down. 
Thermal radiation can occur in solids, liquids and gases. Any objects can both emit and absorb thermal radiation, regardless of if conduction or convection are taking place at the same time. How cool is that though? We get heated up by the sun through infrared electromagnetic waves. I have one more example that will tie all three of these methods of heat transfer together. So you heat a nice pot of tea over the fire. The fire will produce thermal or infrared radiation. This will heat up the bottom of the pot. The hot pot will then transfer heat energy to the tea through conduction because they're in direct contact. The tea at the bottom of the pan will then heat up and rise to the top, allowing the cold tea to drop to the bottom, creating a convection current. How cool is that? Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to learn about other cool physics facts, then please like and subscribe and watch all of my other videos. And if you want to learn about a specific topic, please leave a comment below and I will try to have a video for you.